So we have two big pieces of Minnesota wild news to talk about today. The future of Marc-Andre Fleury has been revealed by NHL insiders, and we have ourselves a signing of one of the most underrated and coolest prospect names that we have seen in a very long time. So, before we dive into the updates, let's bring up Marat Kusnadinov, who's a name that Minnesota Wild fans have been super, super excited about, and for very good reason. This is a 21-year-old prospect, 5'9", 165 pounds, drafted in the second round of the 2020 draft by Minnesota, and, as you can clearly tell by his name and his picture, he's Russian. Kusnadinov. Kusnadinov. Go out there and say that three times fast. Marat Kusnadinov. He's a guy who played in the Russian system with SKA St. Petersburg and eventually was sent over to HK Sochi, where he had played this year. He had 20 points in 49 games played, a pretty big step down from the 41 points he had in 63 games last year with SKA but Murat Kusnadinov made headlines back in the 2020 draft season by just being one of the best players that doesn't really score all too many points. Like, when you hear best player, quote-unquote, you think of a guy that scores all the lights out, you think of a guy who scores a goal a game, a hat-trick a game, assist a game, whatever, whatever, but Murat Kusnadinov, while he wasn't necessarily doing that, he does pretty much everything else that you can do extraordinarily well. He plays a 200-foot game, he plays with pace, when he has the puck in his stick, he can make a few dangles, he is just one of the smartest and most active players from this 2020 draft class that there's a reason all the scouts, whenever they'd talk about Kuznodinov, they would all rave and rave about his game. He's just such a strong hockey player, period. And we had ourselves word earlier this morning from 2 a.m. earlier today that Marat Kusnadinov's contract with HK Sochi has been terminated early. His agent requested to terminate the contract early on his client's request. In April, Sochi plans to make a qualifying offer to Kusnadinov to retain his rights. Now, here is the update as to why this is happening. Due to Sochi not making the Gagarin Cup playoffs, the club agreed to let him out of his contract early. Good on them for not standing in his way and letting him go. Now, with Kusnadinov's contract being terminated, this was the latest scoop. Michael Russo went out there and tweeted this. His representatives have received papers for his mutual contract termination with Sochi. It's being reviewed to ensure he meets the requirements for contract release. And when he signs his ELC with Minnesota, he'll be on non-roster status. He'll count versus the cap until he gets a work visa. And with that in mind, we did have ourselves the signing confirmed by Minnesota just a few minutes ago here that Marat Kusnadinov has signed his entry-level ELC contract for two years with the club. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, let's dive into what the Minnesota Wild went out there and tweeted out about this. With SKA St. Petersburg in 22-23, Kusnadinov tied Artemi Panarin for the 7th highest single-season point total in NHL history by a player 20 years or younger. He also became the youngest player in SKA St. Petersburg history to reach 50 points. He did so in 20 years, 6 months, and 13 days. And this is a pretty good way, I feel, to promote your players. Minnesota Wild PR literally going out there and saying, hey, this guy scored a lot of points. He tied our Tammy Panarin, which is great. And then, of course, we also had ourselves some other conversations going on with Minnesota Wild fans like this one. The Big Mouse went out there and asked Michael Russo, question for Wild fans, how excited are you from a scale from 1 to 10 for this kid? And how does that compare to how excited you were for Kaprizov? There are some replies, I still have high hopes for Kusnadinov, but Daniela Yurov has made him fall a little. Solid 8 out of 10. Better mitts than anyone on the team other than Kaprizov and Rossi, and his hockey IQ in the form of playing without the puck is right up there with Kaprizov, Zuccarello, and Rossi. Just concerned about that shoulder, there was a major injury. We have a 6 out of 10 for him, 10 out of 10 for Kaprizov last year would have been an 8 if he had come over last year. And so for Kuznodinov, you have to think about that injury, the fact that he was out for a little bit, and how this season his production did decline as a result. But of course, I mean, last year, 41 points in 63 KHL games as a 20-year-old, that's a very, very good number to be at. And that should be enough to get anybody excited. Now, whether or not he'll come over to the Minnesota Wild and start scoring the lights out, that remains to be seen. Will Scouching went out there and said this, not to overhype Kusnadinov at all, but I'm just so excited to see this guy grind and battle away like he does. Not sure just how much scoring he'll do, but you can't help but love how he plays. 
And if you've been a fan of Scout Chain for a while, you would have recognized that Kuznodinov was like the main guy that he hyped up back in the 2020 draft. Kuznodinov was his player. So this was such a big, let's just say social media movement back in the day, that when Kuznodinov was inevitably taken by Minnesota, I personally was kind of frustrated with that. I was like, yeah, I wanted the Canucks to get him. But either way, Kuznodinov, as an all-situations, versatile center with some skill and scoring prowess, will definitely help out this Minnesota Wild team. This bodes well because of all the rumors we had seen as to whether or not the Wild would be interested in trading away a guy like Brandon Duhame. Everybody's been talking about him in trade rumors. There are certain teams like my Canucks that are apparently interested in Duhame and his services, so we'll see if there's some sort of a roster replacement move. They trade him away, and then they put Kuznodinov in that spot in the forward core. But for now... This is our scoop on the newest Minnesota Wild signing. We also have ourselves some other news, though, about a Minnesota Wild player who is apparently, maybe, maybe not, on the trade block. Marc-Andre Fleury's name has been connected with a few other teams throughout the year. We had talked about Toronto, we had talked about Edmonton, whether or not Fleury would be a target to either of these teams. He's 39 years old, so definitely in the latter half of his career, and he signed on till the end of this season, making $3.5 million a year. Flurry this year has been pretty alright. 899 save percentage is not the worst thing in the world, considering NHL league average around this point is like 900, but in his past few games, he actually has been a little bit better. Five games played in his most recent, he's got a 908 save percentage, and in his last 10 games, he's at a 906. So, Flurry definitely has improved his stock a little bit, and because of that, there have been conversations as to whether or not teams would covet him in some sort of a trade. Well, guess what? We now have ourselves our answer because, according to Elliot Friedman, one important development as well, heading towards a trade deadline, Minnesota has indicated that they will not move Marc-Andre Fleury. They are happy to keep him. And the first reply, not talking about Chester Ming, but saying, yeah, the dude's 39 and you aren't trading him, lol. Minnesota fans are going to say, yeah, great news, but there are some rebuttals over here. This is clearly Flowers' decision, and they're respecting it. Learn hockey. Trading him makes no sense, plus he does have a no-move. And that is indeed the case here with the Minnesota Wild and Flurry. He does have a no-move clause on the contract, and he did say himself earlier this year that he was like, yeah, I want to stay here. I'm good here in Minnesota. I don't want to keep on moving and changing the fate of my kids and my wife and everything, because going from Pittsburgh to Vegas to Chicago to Minnesota, I mean, that's a lot of movement. And for a guy who's been a lot more of a family man the past few years, you could definitely respect the decision to want to stay in Mini. When it comes to the Minnesota Wild and that wild card hunt, though, they are kind of in the midst of things right here. If you take a look at the Western Conference, they're not top three in the Central, but they are on the outside looking in. They're six points behind a wild card spot with one game in hand on Nashville. It's not really looking all too good that they're going to be able to go out there and make it, but they are 7-2-1 and one in their last 10. They have been putting it together a little bit as of late. Kirill Kaprizov, Yol Eriksson, these guys going out there and scoring some points like crazy, plus Mark andre Andre Fleury giving his team the support that they need. So who knows if there's a late surge from Minnesota to make the wild card, if that's going to be something that is on the horizon. You could even debate that the signing of Marat Kusnadinov and his contract was a little bit ill-advised because they'd be wasting a year of his ELC on a season like this. But still... They have Fleury on the roster, they're keeping him here, Kusnadinov is coming over, one of the top prospects getting signed on to a deal. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, firstly about Marat, and secondly about Marc-Andre Fleury and his decision to stay. Thoughts in the comment section below, how do you feel about this? If you're a Wild fan, I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Roll 9 and bye.